Ezra once more, and we have an evening planned for you guys. Oh, yes, we do. It's a whole thing. I was balls deep in work today. I was busy, 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 bumblebee. Did not get the stream up until now, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be here. Hell no. And in fact, it doesn't mean we're even going to finish for the end of the week. We have a Saturday stream lined up for you. Yes, we do. We do have that Saturday stream lined up for you. We're going to be going big because Path of Exile has been on the blower. Mike! I'm like, what's up, mate? What's going on? You like Delve, don't you, mate? Yeah, I don't mind Delve. Pretty good. All right, then. Why don't you do, like, Infinite Delve? Because we just made it. Why don't you come and check it out tomorrow? I'm like, all right, then. I will do. Can I flicker, though? Yeah, you can flicker. Yeah, you can. So I'm going to do that. It's going to be good. So we're going to be doing that tomorrow. That's right. We've got a Saturday stream all lined up. We're going to be doing some wonderful POE. Endwalkerless. I am Endwalkerless. I was there for the end of the world. It was a celebration. We had DJ going. <laughs> we had a party. We were throwing the champagne. We were firing the fireworks all over the place as the servers died. We held the line till 9.02. We held that line. As people were disappearing before our eyes, we stood there and watched as we held that line until they finally kicked us all out. And I hope every single one of you is enjoying Endwalker, those of you who can log in. I've seen some 8Ks and some 10K queues in the chat. People queuing for two hours to get in to play. I hope it's good. I do hope it's good. I hope you have a fantastic time for those of you who get inside and are enjoying it every single time. I wish I was there with you. It's the first time. Weird week for me, man. There's a WoW PTR up that I'm not in. I'm not in. It's the first PTR I've missed in like... 10 years or something uh, it's from like the burning crusade i have not on the wow ptr i had a little look last night i checked in with max and co to see what they were up to uh and ed walker released and i'm not a part of that either <laughs> i'm not a part of that i'm not there yet i'm not there we're gonna take it easy i'm gonna stick to my guns i'm gonna stick to my guns i'm enjoying what we're doing so much i'm gonna stick to my guns i'm not rushing it i'm not getting it done i don't care about getting videos out on it or anything like that i'm just gonna play it as we're doing, because we're having a really good time. But I can't say I don't miss it. I can't say I don't miss that rush of a brand new expansion. Of checking out brand new content and looking at all those things. I do miss it. I do miss it. But we're sticking tight and we're being good. We're not stalling by any means. We're not stalling. There's no stalling going on. We're just not there yet. I did see Ziz's son. Yes, I did see that. But not only that. After drama, we're going to be with the Oxcast. We are going to be joining in with the Oxcast to take part in some fantasy uh, games. Some games that are going to be on. Uh, that is going to be happening after drama time today. Is we will be jumping in there uh, and having some fun. Uh, Prime Video has put it together where we're going to be taking part. I, it's going to test my fantasy knowledge. <laughs> and you know me and law. You know me and law. I am... A1 on all the stories and all the details that happen in a lot of the lore of fantasy universes. It's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. I hope it's all on like FF. As long as it's based on Final Fantasy XIV between A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward. Oh, I'm there. I'm absolutely there. I'm absolutely there. It's doomed. No, man. Can you get help from the chat? I mean, maybe I could leave my chat window open. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Maybe we could have a Discord or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I hope I get a buzzer. I was in the briefing yesterday. And what do you guys think of this? I was desperately trying to get soundboards so we could have our own noises, right? That sounds good because they're going to do have like question and answers. So you could, you could just... I can have guns and stuff, right? Star Trek does count as fantasy. Absolutely it does. Science fiction does, not, does count as... I won't embarrass you. I won't embarrass you. I promise. I promise you. I won't embarrass you or anything. You know, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. But let's kick off today with some drama time because that's why you guys have showed up. Let's do that. Now, I love this. This is like the best part of drama time for me because we read a story and clearly, clearly... Somebody is in direct violation of all that is holy, right? Somebody is in direct violation of all that is holy in the good name. And then that person who's in direct valid uh, direct uh, violation responds. <laughs> they actually have the they have the balls to say, "Hold on. Hold on. That's not how it went down. That's not how it went down." There's, uh, there's another side to this tale that perhaps the jury, the great jury, should consider. 
in the in the telling of our tale. And so we'll take a look, because why not? And then we, as a stable and uh, fair jury, as we are, I keep on typing all caps again, even though caps lock's not on. I love it. Fantastic. Uh, we'll make our own decisions, right? The guilty, you see what I mean? You're premature with that guilty. You're so premature with that guilty. They might not be guilty. Right? They might not be guilty. You, you never know. So, for those of you who may have missed last, last week's drama, and also, massive shout-outs to how many of you, like the so many of you who had Drama Time as their number one Spotify podcast. Thank you very much. Um, last week, we had the story of the DKP Tycoon, where a guild allowed people to buy, with gold, their way into getting gear from their currently progressing team. And it got so bad because the team started to falter by bringing along non-capable players that the guild management decided that it would be fine if the guild kind of collapsed in its productivity of actually being able to do content because they were earning so much gold that they could buy everybody a boost. So they would essentially become some sort of bizarre bizarre team that was charging people for gear while no longer being able to obtain the gear but that's fine because they're charging people so much that they can buy boosts from better teams in order to get their stuff that was where we kind of were <laughs> now <laughs> the raid leader of that team let me let me begin the story and then we can enjoy our time together hello preacher and your jury recently i was watching drama time on youtube they made me realize that one of those stories sounded very, very familiar to me. The story was named after the DKP buying Tycoon. The reason for this is because I am, in fact, the raid leader of that particular situation. And in that story, I was referred to as Sean. Now, for everyone that was listening to that tale, it probably sounds like I was guilty. But. But. I want to share my side of the story. Not because I'm not guilty, okay? <laughs> but because it shows a level of greed that I still genuinely regret to this very day. Okay? So not not asking for innocence, not asking for reprieve, agrees on the guilt, but perhaps it's even worse than we possibly realized. Let's start out. The story starts primarily in the Blackrock Foundry era of World of Warcraft, where me and Boomkin Burger, my girlfriend and loot officer, talked over dinner about how we were going to tackle Blackrock Foundry. Now, in defense of our author here, it was made abundantly clear in the first part of this saga that he was a very well-respected member of the raid team. His raiders went along with this situation because they believed in him. He did take a heroic guild and turn them into a mythic clearing guild. And therefore, they did have trust in him. Undeniably, they had faith in his decision-making process. The reason we were having this talk over dinner one night was that even though we cleared Highmall on Mythic, I personally was very annoyed with attendance issues we had during the tier and that it felt some people would only show up for farm raids and never wanted to help with progress. Now, everybody's been there. There are always those people who have zero interest in dying at all. They can't be asked, but they do really want the rewards. That bit they enjoy quite a bit. But learning how to get them, that's going to be a little bit of a stretch. Okay, that's going to be a little bit of a stretch. Now, I hear you guys think, why didn't you just kick those people from the guild? The answer is that a lot of our best players, to my sadness... Oh, you dumb bastard. Okay. <laughs> this is the... What's... <laughs> What's the worst recruitment decision you can make as a guild? Come on, chat. Don't fail me. Don't fail me. Listeners around the world, what is the absolute worst thing you can do when making recruitment choices? Easy. Package deals. Package deals. You know, and I've been there. I've been there when people are offering me package deals. You know. 
that you're not recruiting good people. You're getting one good guy, maybe two, and you're also getting some friends. You're getting some buddies. And those buddies are dog shit. Absolute fucking dog shit. And when you kick them, or you drop them, everybody's going with them. You know it every single fucking time. I knew in my heart of hearts, says our author, if I was to kick their friends, then the good players would also leave. So my girlfriend, Boomkin Burger, came up with the idea of raid attendance points. Now, obviously, I know it's just a scuffed DKP system. I'm under no illusions that that's what it was. But at the time, it sounded like it would fix our issues. It would mean I would not lose the Raiders, at least in the short term. But it also meant people would have to show up to actually earn the points and get the items. Instead of coming later and just getting them for free. (coughs) Okay. I mean, I see his point. That's why DKP did exist. That's why it was developed. People needed to earn their items. All right. We discussed the change with the officer team. And most officers agreed since it would not change anything since they always were core members regardless. And they always got gear over the tiers anyway. The DKP system was accepted by most of the raiders. Most people did not really care since they were raiders anyway. So, Boomkin Burger and I thought it was a good decision. This is a good choice we're making. This cannot go wrong. Later on, however, some key people in the guild started getting burned out by the game and decided to leave for a break, get a breather. This meant an awfully big influx of new players into our guild. New trials to join our ranks. But with 15 hungry raiders and the bench being too shit for words, we decided that in order to progress, our trials needed items. Hmm. Gear does not make one a better player. Let's be really clear on this. The solution to bad players is not gear. A shitter with a good item level, is still a shitter. Okay? You're still a shitter. Unfortunately, you're still going to stand in fight. You may survive an extra tick or two, but eventually that's going to pop. Now, the issue with this, Mike, that Boomkin Burger was afraid that if we gave them gear, these kinds of players would just leave. Uh... Yeah, probably. (laughs) Yeah, probably. (laughs) So we discussed in the officer team if there was any possible solutions to this issue. How? How? How do we recruit new people and gear them up and not have them leave? You can't, unfortunately. I'm sorry to tell you that. You can't do that. Out of this discussion came the rule. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh. Okay, all right. I would, I, I've got to point. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna point this out now before we read this. It's not a completely illogical decision that you made here. It's just a bad one, but it's not illogical. I can see the logic behind what you did here. Okay, we came up with this idea. DKB, so the points to buy their items could be bought by new trials and socials. So they would be invested into the guild. I don't... I do see the logic behind this thought process. It's just not gonna work, though. (laughs) It's just not gonna work. (laughs) Gold has a very different value depending on each individual person. By a long, long way. Hmm. And it also causes clear skill problems. I understand what you thought. is like if they... Yeah, you're trying to play on the sunk cost fallacy. It's just... Uh, it does just doesn't work like that. Unfortunately. Looking back at this, this was obviously a stupid decision. I, I see how you got there, though. I see how you got there. They'll be invested. They're tied to the guild. They put money into it. So they'll probably want to stick around. I see where you came from it. But yeah, it's a bad idea. 
Since any serious raider that applied would instantly tell us to fuck off if they heard they needed to give gold. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, if someone told me, yeah, you can you can get more gear if you give us gold, I would just... <laughs> Are you fucking stupid? No. <laughs> How about I kill the boss and then we get the loot? How about that? So instead, it turned out that our message to get new recruits attracted the goblins. It attracted all those players that had no interest in learning, but really did want to be carried. Yeah. Let's enter Night Sion and Roberto. Night Sion was a human warlock who had joined us at the end of Mists of Pandaria in preparation for Walls of Draenor. He had a friend with him who was a combat rogue at the time. I liked them. They were always on time, performed decently, and had a good sense of humor. I'd grown to trust them over our time in Highmall, and outside of raiding, we also did challenge modes ro runs in Wards of Draenor. It was good fun. Lumkin Burger, however, hated Night Sion with a passion. Lumkin Burger and I aren't together anymore as of 2021, F. But I never really figured out why she hated him so much. Looking back at Lumkin Burger, it might be because Night Sion sometimes had what many of us would call a dark sense of humor. He also was very, very blunt and upfront with what he said. Boomkin Burger did not particularly like this. Anyways, Blackrock Foundry begins. With the new loot rules implemented, everyone knows the score. Here we go. We cleared Orgorja and Gruul. With a couple of hiccups on Mythic after a little bit. Blast Furnace was a pain, but we did it. Leading us to Beast Lord. Or as I call him now, the bane of my dignity. Oh, Wait, you did fucking... This must be heroic. Oh, you did the Blast Furnace before Beast Lord? Mental. That must be heroic. That has to be heroic. Or maybe it was Mythic. What a weird decision. <laughs> we kept wiping on end. And we kept wiping end on end. When one night, one of our Warlocks, not si Night Sion, left us for another Mythic Guild. And here enters Connor. You might remember Connor. Connor had bought DKP for farm loot before and got regular carries throughout heroic Blackrock Foundry and the first bosses we had on farm. Connor was friends with Boomkin Burger and when Boomkin Burger was talking to Connor, Connor provided us with the perfect solution to our problems. Like a knight in shining armor, an angel about to bestow on us the gift of his wisdom. He asked a very simple question. Guys, how much gold do I need to give to join into the progression team for Mythic? You're missing a warlock. I'm a warlock. Exactly how much shiny coins do I need to give you to buy that raid spot? How much do you reckon it was? He bought a raid spot. A mythic progression raid spot. He bought one. How much do you think he paid? How much do you think they charged him? We were talking about this last week. Like, the money is very, very scaled, depending on how much you get. Ooh, ooh, 200k. Mm, 50 mil. I mean, some people have definitely experienced actual boost runs. <laughs> Boomkin Burger picked a number out of thin air. 500,000 gold per raid night. She meant it as a joke at first. 500,000 gold a night. But Connor accepted the offer and instantly handed over 500,000 gold. At this point, Preacher, I was in a dilemma. On the one hand, I know Connor is absolute dog shit. But Connor and my girlfriend are friends. And I have an empty spot in the raid team for tonight. Also, Connor did give us 500,000 gold. That was a lot of consumables for a raid night. I decided to let Connor join. I figured as raid leader, it was better to practice the fight that we're progressing with a shitty warlock than to cancel the raid, right? 
Surely this is a better solution than just not raiding at all. Is to bring in our boy Connor. And I swear to you, Preacher. I swear to you. That raid is the worst raid night I have ever had in World of Warcraft. To this very day. Thinking about it. And even going into BRF for transmog runs. Genuinely still gives me anxiety. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was that bad. Wow. PTSD? <laughs> From BRF? That's rough, man. <laughs> That's fucking rough. You got some PTSD there. Jesus, fuck. <clears throat> we discussed the performance in the officer meeting after the raid. But Boomkin Burger reminded everyone of the DKP rule. And that Connor was providing more than DPS to this guild. To TLDR, this officer meeting that we had after our worst ever raid night, every single one of the officer team, every single one, agreed that Connor is one of the worst players they'd ever seen, but they really like having gold. <laughs> we agreed to let Connor come more often and that perhaps we can have someone help him with his performance issues. That way we could maybe have a good player and the gold. <laughs> you corrupt motherfuckers. <laughs> you corrupt motherfuckers. But gold though? <laughs> gold is nice. It's nice to have. Now since the best warlock I knew was Night Sion, I asked him to go through Connor's logs as you told last week. He was not very happy with this, but he did eventually go through the logs to see what the issue was. It took him like 10 minutes to come back to me and show me that Connor didn't know how to play Warlocks and didn't know that his class had Chaos Bolt or Havoc and was only pressing Incinerate. For any of our FF14 players, that's really bad. <laughs> Imagine just pressing Fire 4 over and over again. If you could. So I talked to Boomkin Burger about this. My girlfriend. And she said that even though Connor was shit, you're right. If we have enough gold, we can buy anything we want. And it doesn't matter. She came up with an alternative. <clears throat> she had an idea that might appease the rest of the players. She talked to Connor, and apparently Connor was genuinely afraid he was going to get kicked off the raid team, as he did have a damage meter, and he could see what everyone else could see. <laughs> In his desperation to keep his raid spot, he offered us 2 million gold. And he would also agree to keep paying 500,000 gold for every raid night he was allowed to join. So we let him stay. <laughs> you corrupt bastard. You're killing everything. What the fuck? <laughs> Just buy a token, bro. Holy fucking Jesus. Uh, now, preacher. <laughs> preacher. I swear to you and to your audience. I still regret this decision. Even today. I couldn't resist the temptation. Two million gold. Even though I made a lot of gold doing this. There's no denying it. I fucking crushed my guild. <laughs> the officers would constantly complain and cause the raiders too. So eventually we let them in on why Connor was still in the raid team. As the questions from the raiders got more and more persistent. Our officers said they would accept it. Oh no. The officers said they would be okay with it. But as officers, and the ones who were still part of the raid, they needed to be seeing some of this gold. I made the decision to pay off our officer team. I tell you now, and if they're listening, don't deny it. I gave them each 700,000 gold to keep the secret of how much Connor was paying. 
You, you paid them off. <laughs> As you can probably imagine, <laughs> this didn't work for long. Night Scion started complaining about Connor's performance. And most guildies obviously agreed. They weren't blind. These complaints and shit talk would eventually reach Connor, who of course did not like where that was going, especially of how much gold he was giving. Connor knew he was safe. Connor demanded, demanded that we apply, in his words, justice onto Night Scion. He threatened to stop giving us gold if the toxicity towards him did not stop. Now, what do we do? We've given this guy the spot. We're taking all these shiny coins. But now he's making demands. Now, our officers were afraid this would lead to problems. Yeah, this is probably what's going to lead to the problems. <laughs> this is the issue. Because at this point, Connor was essentially paying for everybody, everybody, every one of the officers' team subscriptions and more. And so the whole officer team agreed that we should probably put some justice on Night Scion and tell him that he had to stop his toxic behavior. Which, of course, you guys all know what happened after that. As we discussed it last week. Buki Burger, however, panicked overnight. Lay thinking about what was going on. And decided to demote him without my consultancy based on low social reputation. That's right! He got demoted! They said they'd implemented social reputation. They'd gone full China. That's right, Night Scion. You've got bad social reputation. That's what's wrong with you, buddy. You got really bad social reputation within the guild. Ergo, demotion. To put this in perspective, as you all probably guessed, this was not a real thing. <laughs> she made it up on the spot. No one had ever heard of it before. Naturally, I face palmed hard after I heard about it. This did not only cause Night Scion to leave the guild, but also caused a full-scale riot. Over the next few weeks, all of our officers would abandon ship after making enough gold off Connor, saying they didn't want anything to do with it. Oh, of course! The rats leave the ship! Oh, I'm out of here. Stuffing money down their fucking shirts. Oh, this place is terrible. Yeah, it's the worst. The worst, dude. I'm out of here. This, of course, made me see how stupid I was. And I got into a fight with my girlfriend over it. Because of this saying it was her stupid idea that got the guild in trouble in the first place. <laughs> Fuck off. You can't put it all on her. No, 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 no. It takes two to tango, buddy. It takes two to tango. She's getting it. It's all your idea. I didn't come up with this. It was nothing to do with me. It was your idea. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, sure. Eventually, something happened that I honestly should have expected. <laughs> what a shock. Connor left the guild. Due to... Oh, it was a... Oh, she's a she. Due to her not getting the progress that she was paying for. What a surprise. What a surprise. I'm paying for a mythic carry, but you can't kill any fucking bosses. Like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> Instead, she went to a full mythic clearing team and got a, an entire clear for cheaper than she was paying us. Now, I'm not going to lie. I still hoped I could repair the damage done by our guild. We could still save this. It's going to be fine. <clears throat> I asked Roberto to help with recruiting, reorganizing the raid group, getting us back on track, and he accepted. And I changed his role to officer in the guild. Oh, I remember this. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm, unlock. Later that week, he asked Boomkin Burger if he could get gold permission since the guild bank was running low on potions. And after all, that's what all the gold is for. It may be naivety or whatever. Boomkin Burger 
gave all of the officers the permission to take out as much gold as they would like. After all, we were rich. <laughs> as you read last week, Night Scion's friend, who was still an officer, decided to take every last fucking penny. I want to be clear on this, though, because you guys were curious. Oh! Okay, they were smart. Okay, we were talking about this last week. Did they try and put everything in the guild bank? They did not. How much do you think they took? How much do you think they got away with in the end? Because we were talking about it last week, right? There's a gold cap on the guild banks and things like that. And as uh, one mil, yeah, you're pretty close. It was only 900k. That's all they would put in the guild bank. The rest and considerable amount of gold was on my alts and Boomkinberger's account. <laughs> Since the gold cap was only 1 million back in Walls of Draenor. I was furious at this at first, but then I realized it was my girlfriend's mistake. <laughs> she did it again. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> she did it again. I also realized... It's not really that much gold compared to what we've got. So, I mean, what, what the fuck are you going to do? <clears throat> we decided to disband the guild since the damage was now clearly beyond repair. I don't have screenshots of the gold. Why would I have? But in total, Connor... Ooh, okay, one last guess. How much in total do you think Connor gave this bunch of uh, corrupt politicians? How much do you think he paid them off in total? Oh, you're going to have to pump up those numbers, kids. <laughs> In total, Connor paid something close to 30 million gold. 30. Of which I still had 10 million, and Boomkinberger had her own pot of 10 million. The other 10 million went to the officers and was used for consumables. We just didn't tell them about the rest. Now, I want to ask the jury. You don't want to ask my jury, man. <laughs> They're not impartial by any means. All right, he has a request of you guys. He has a request. Now I want to ask the jury, what would you do for gold? In the span of two months, I made more money than I ever saw up to that point in World of Warcraft. Sometimes the temptation is just too big. P.S. I do want to apologize to Night Slayon. I really liked you, man, and I am sorry for selling your raid spot. <sighs> 30 million in two months well 10 million right he got 10 million girlfriend got 10 mil what would you would you sell out your guild for 10 million gold absolutely nearly everybody here would do that like without question now the point is here he never knew it would reach 10 million he never knew it would reach those numbers right it started off like 500k but absolutely fucking lootly most of you would do that like, there is, z I have zero doubts most of you would completely throw people under the bus for 10 million in a game. <laughs> like, in a heartbeat, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of you would. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't, but that's only because I'm a rich bitch. And uh, it's not that much gold. But back in the day, Warlords of Draenor time, uh, I would have done some filthy shit for 10 million. I would have done something strange. I would have gone weird. I, I, I think in Wallace of Draenor, I, I'd have got pretty weird for 10 mil. I would. I would have got pretty weird for 10 mil. Not like in Modern WoW. In, in WOD, 10 million is a lot. It is. It is. For 10 mil. Yeah. <clears throat> for 10 mil. Garrisons. Uh, look. I, gar they were fucking boring. I'll, I, everybody knows this. I did not take full advantage of the garrison system. I had them all. I did it for a bit, but it was just too fucking boring, and I just stopped doing it. And I did not make millions off the Wad Garrisons. I couldn't be asked. I simply couldn't be asked. I had everything I wanted. Like it was just pointless to me. It made it made no difference to my life, so I just stopped doing it. I think I did it for about two months, but then I just gave up. Like it was a fucking waste of time. Uh, it's a total waste of time. <laughs> it's worth more now. Oh, what is the inflation of WoW? I have no idea, but it's not good. I know that for a strike. I know that. I, I actually, I want to say to you, Arthur, one, good job reaching out to us and telling your side of the story. You're still extremely guilty because you had no idea it would get to 10 million, but like I said, a lot of people would fucking do a lot of shit in World of Warcraft for 10 million, including probably throwing their entire guild under the bus. Uh, yeah, that would happen. Right. 
We need a Final Fantasy XIV guild name, if you would be so kind. My wonderful live audience. These chaps right here who are giga awesome, being here week after week, having some fun, and also our first timers. Sail with us already. Okay. Uh, refugees. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The weekly wizards. If you could tell... If uh, the FF14 players could tear themselves away from looking at the uh, Endwalker queue for two minutes and just give us a name. Thank you. Uh, the Crystal Que, mm, the Grussy Gobblers, the La La Lords. Oh, I like that. The La La Lords. Yeah, I like that. Q Crew, Q Crew chiming in. The Sad Boys, the Q Crew chiming in. Okay. <laughs> One of the tags that Bex has put for this story is, I hate this. <laughs> okay. Is this angry? Do I need to get angry here, Bex, or what? <clears throat> okay. Preacher and Chat! Love you all. But about a, a year or two ago, oh my God, back to whew, 2019, I sent you a story. I sent you an exciting story that involved bizarre roleplay involving casual torture of my night elf rogue. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that lady who strapped you up in the basement of somewhere. An epic battle in Menethil Harbor and a story that had spawned the iconic lift me up and break my back like Bane style. <laughs> Shared between me and my girlfriend every now and then. It was season 8, episode 7. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Lift me up and break my back like Bane. Uh, I, I think that's a cultural thing, but uh, I'd break a back is a Northern English phrase to represent going hard with your partner. I'd break a back. It's not pretty, but it is a thing. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> as a sort of anniversary of that fateful reading, I'm just sharing some culture with you guys, all right? Just give me a chance. As a sort of anniversary of that fateful reading, I decided I would share with you another story that had gone down during the summer that spanned both Eorzea, where I make my home in, and an ocean that had been haunting me in my dreams ever since. It may prove to be more juicy than a pre my previous story, so I hope you enjoy. Is this about Limsa? Is this Limsa or ERP or something? Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I decided I had decided to give FF14 a try after hearing about it again. At first, it was certainly unusual. Yep. Oh, yeah. A bit terrified of it due to how Japanese it looked. But as I played more of it, I eventually became comfortable and soon enough hooked into that world. My girlfriend joining me soon after. Both of us enjoying the game, taking our time admiring the sights, enjoying the MSQ, and even seeing a miracle happen. My sweetheart enjoying dungeons for the first time out of all the MMOs we had ever played. Really? Interesting. Huh. Is the FF14 dungeons? Were better than any other dungeons in other MMOs. Hmm. Part of it had to do with how friendly the party members have been. The other part is that the dungeons, at least the ones you do as you go through the story, are not as complicated and generally well designed, so you have an idea of what you have to do in any given situation. It was after an excursion to a dungeon, it was me, a brave and undaunting gunbreaker, her an elegant and deadly dancer, paired with two strangers from the other parts of the ether. We said our farewells, left the instance and carried on as normal, until it was when I got a message in the pink. A message from one of the previous party members. We'll call them West. Hey man, you're a pretty good tank. Do you want to join our FC? I was being requested to join a guild based on my ability? I quickly messaged my girlfriend. Did, did, did you get the whisper? Maybe they're just looking for anybody. Did, did you get asked to join them? No. She asked me if, if I was interested in joining. And if maybe if they want you, they'll invite me as well. A package deal. Uh, uh, I told Wes to wait for a moment. Just give me a, Just give me a moment. Just give me a moment. That's all I ask. As I then took the time to deliberate on whether or not I should take up this offer. Should I do it? We concluded that I'll join first. Let's get a strategy going. I will join the free company first. 
so as to get a lay of the guild. See what the atmosphere is like. See if they're just recruiting anybody and anybody who happens to be walking around. And if it's good, I can get you in. So I sent a message back to West. Sure, I'll join. Throw me an invite. So there I was. A new member in the La La Lords. The free company had roughly 50 people in total. A small, but decent enough amount of people. They seemed active, and the members weren't bad either. I was with them for a few days, and then I then got them to invite my girlfriend as well. And thus our adventure together continued. Mostly playing on our own, but sometimes taking on a healer or an extra DPS if we were queuing for a dungeon, and wanted them to pop up faster. As always, when joining a new guild, life was wonderful. Everything is good. We're happy. Let's go forward just seven days. A week later. Another message in the pink, once again from West. Seemingly happy with us being in the free company, asking me how things were. Do we need anything? We're fine, I said. Just going through the story at a steady pace. <laughs> then he sent me another message. Do you guys want to play SOT? What is SOT? I replied. Being a human who does not, does not speak in abbreviations. Oh god. <laughs> sea of Thieves. You should check it out. It's the main game that we play outside of this in the free company. I only re remember this game as a game release that fell flat on its face on launch due to having nothing in terms of content, but I was curious as to what it was like now. I checked it out on Steam. Looked interesting. Screenshots made it look like a fun, casual experience and a great way to bond with the other members of my free company, right? And I know from listening to your videos, Mike, that trying to play games outside of the main game with your members is a good way to build rapport. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, most of the time. Most of the time. I have a feeling this is not going to go well. But yeah, most of the time it's a good idea. So I decided, yes! Yes! I shall give it a try. Now the first major mistake of my inevitable mental breakdown was formed there. Actually purchasing the game. Even Steam itself tried to prevent me from buying it because it knew what awaited me by failing to purchase it. Twice it failed. My mistake was not doing more than a cursory glance at the Steam front page and looking at the screenshots and trailers without any sound playing. I'm not sure if you know about the game. I do. I've played it. But for anybody who doesn't know, let me describe it in the most biased way possible. <laughs> okay. Imagine if League of Legends and World of Warcraft's PvP scene get together for a night. Nine months later, they would give birth through the butthole to Sea of Thieves. A game that has arguably one of the worst online communities I have ever seen. I mean, that's not my experience with Sea of Thieves. <laughs> like, at all. In any way, shape, or form. Uh, I had a great... T well, to be fair, my, my crew put my dog in a cannon and shot it out to sea. Yeah. And then they started vomiting on the floor. Right, it's pretty toxic, that game, actually. Now I think about it. Yeah. And they locked me in prison. I was kind of bullied in that game. Hmm. But whatever. <laughs> I decided to launch it. The tutorial gave an amazing first impression. Then I played the game in the open world, and I, too, had a good, bright-eyed impression. I played it for half an hour before logging off and going back to FF14 for the rest of the day. Classic MMO play. <laughs> Classic MMO play. Yeah, 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 yeah. I played Sea of Thieves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I played it for like half an hour. <laughs> and then I went back to back to the, the MMO. <laughs> you know. Uh, you could say I'm a variety gamer. You could say that. <sighs> Definitely share my skills across the board. As soon as I logged back in, though, I told in the free company chat, Guys! Guys! I have Sea of Thieves. And people were very excited. Then started asking me, when can I play? And if my girlfriend is going to join in and we can get a proper little crew together of friends. She had no idea what we were talking about. So I told them that I'm still new and I just want to, you know, get used to it and stuff before I join a crew. 
But I did let them know that I will call upon them when I am ready to engage in multiplayer madness. I decided one evening to sit down with the game. Turning on Twitch so as my girlfriend could watch me play. So I set sail. Oh, you don't. Yeah, I assume you don't live together then. So I set sail for the open ocean. It was a beautiful time. Sailing the seas with no specific goal in mind. My hair in the breeze and the salty air in my lungs. It was certainly a very beautifully crafted world. I looked at the map, saw many lovely islands, and decided to just go and see what's there. I was thinking to myself, this game looks so colourful and pleasant that it would have a pleasant player base as well. And this is where the spiral started. I saw somebody else on the ocean, another ship in the distance. They sailed up to me. To say hello, I imagine. Friendly players sailing the seas together, pirating these lands. They immediately killed me and destroyed my ship. Confused because I had nothing and admittedly a little annoyed. I respawned and set off again to another island away from these actual pirates saving the ocean, sailing the ocean. Fifteen minutes passed having a good time once again when another ship a three-man party boarded me. They started telling me that I suck dicks. <laughs> I should leave the game for being so bad at it. <laughs> you suck dicks. <laughs> the play session carried on. And I wasn't really having that much fun anymore. My girlfriend suggested, just don't play it, lol. And she also found no pleasure in watching it and me getting visibly annoyed. I learned the hard way. I learned that I had learned that way that the game was deceptive. A game that had PvP on as a default? And no way to disable it? I went to the forums, of course. The people there were even worse. People in constant wars over whether or not the game would be better if it had PvE servers. I chimed in and not long after being permanently banned because of how intensely and passionately I argued. Yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. Always, uh, always getting banned off forums for passion. <laughs> always. <laughs> Essentially, I said that anybody who... Uh, I argued with anybody who thought they were a PvP god and told them they should get fucked. <laughs> Unfortunately, the time I spent playing it clocked over the two-hour limit. I couldn't refund it. I logged, of course, back into FF14. The free company awaiting me with inquiries. We're going to get a game of Sea of Thieves going. When are you playing? Come on. Let's get a crew. West was taking the charge, eager to hear of my schedule so we could set up a game session. I told them, honest, this game is shit. I got steamrolled immediately by groups of three and four players and I didn't really feel like playing it. It won't let me not PvP. An uncomfortable silence fell over for a moment. But then they started again. And you know what it's like when people want to play a game and you're saying no. Mate. May listen. It always starts that way. It'll be fine. If you come with us, it'll all be fine. We'll help you. You'll be so safe. It'll all be good, man. Don't worry about it. I was skeptical, but after all, I had been playing solo. Decided if there is anyone I'd play the game with, it would be my FF3 company. After all, these guys seem a lot more genuine in their goodwill compared to the forum scum. They asked if my girlfriend will join as well, but she replied that she did not find that game interesting at all. And so one evening when she went to bed, I joined forces with West and another member of the free company and we set off into the Sea of Thieves. Thinking that there will be safety in number. Can we also point out the scam here where West was like, oh yeah, the girl plays it. And they managed with convincing and scheduling to get three people together. <laughs> oh, the whole guild's playing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we all play Sea of Thieves. Yeah, you got it? You got it? You got it? You got it? I think with some uh, diary conflicts and all that, we could probably get like me and my friend and you. As long as you go and buy the game. Yeah, no problem. No problem. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. Instead, 
<laughs> Thinking, of course, that there will be safety in numbers and that all the treasure chests hidden across this vast land will be ours. And we'll find it so much quicker with three pairs of eyes than just one. Instead, all we did as soon as we logged in was sail around the ocean looking for people to gank. <laughs> It's carried on for a good amount of time. We took no quests. We didn't stop at any islands. We just sailed around, hoping to bump into someone. I thought maybe this is how the game goes if you're playing with a crew. But after a while, I was obviously getting rather bored. So eventually I piped up. Guys... Why aren't we doing any of the content of the game? We could hunt skeletons. We could dig up treasure maps, chase down ghost ships. We could even do sunken treasures or something like that, right? Mate. 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 The PvE in this game is fucking well shit. What you do, right? Is you let all the fucking idiots do the PvE. And then, mate, you fucking pirate their ship. Take it all. And that means you don't even have to take part in the shitty PvE. So all we're going to do, mate, is walk up to them, right? I'm going to pop all my fucking coolies. And I'm going to take their ship to town and steal all their treasure. Right? That's how we see a thieves because we're fucking sea of pirates. I'm aware that this game is supposed to be a sandbox where you can play however you'd like. But I was honestly annoyed that they were dismissing the developer-created content. <laughs> it's always there for what seems to be unreliable, player-driven content was a complete waste of time. Why would we play this game if we're just waiting for somebody else to do the content? I don't get it. Especially considering that I'm a new player who still found the PvE things like fun bits. All the while, not really feeling like any hype for fighting other players. I didn't want to PvP in the first place. Especially after finding the experience of it to be tedious after a few matches in the Aridia mode. I played the game with the boys a few times on separate occasions. All of them ending with nothing being done. Finding one or two ships. Sinking them. And finding nothing on board in any way. Begging the question of what the fuck are we even doing? This is pointless. I wasn't having any fun. Neither on my own or with these guys. Alone, I would spend an hour or so playing and amassing a small amount of treasure only to lose it to somebody ganking me. Or I would play with a group and achieve nothing in their constant hunt for ganking. I prior prioritized, of course, once more going back to Final Fantasy XIV with my girlfriend. A game I had more fun playing with company that I enjoy and just had a great time every time. Want to play Sea of Thieves later? Every day! What are you doing later, mate? I want to do some Sea of Thieves, yeah? I want to do some... I'm pretty sure we're going to find some fucking people tonight, mate. Yeah? We'll fucking find them. Every day. No, thank you. No, thank you. I politely declined. Even after completing a dungeon, would they ask me if I want to play it? Fed up, I decided to uninstall Sea of Thieves. Up to this point, I had dreams about it. Still present to this day, and I honestly hate the game and everything about it. All the while, my free company keeps messaging me. West in particular. He messaged me asking if I want to play it. I've uninstalled it. I don't even have it anymore. And I, I didn't like it. It's not for me. Okay. All right. Okay. No problem, mate. No problem. Won't ask you again. All right. I see how it is. I'm not going to ask you again. It's fine. One week later, you installed Sea of Thieves again, mate. Have you, though? Bet you have, haven't you? Because you've been thinking about it. Want to play it? Want to play it, though? Just one, one, one session? Just one? Come on. No. Please leave me alone. Stop asking about it. Every week. For three fucking weeks. Got to see your thieves, mate. Install it. Go on. Play with the lads. Don't you like the free company? Is that what it is? Don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Why don't you play some feet see your thieves then? Every time he would promise a grand adventure and fun with the boys on the ocean. He said my experience was bad, 
because I was a noob. And that Sea of Thieves has one of the steepest learning curves in online gaming. <laughs> and as soon as I'm over that hump, I will be in love with what's happening. <sighs> I knew that wasn't true. I had tested it. I had played the arena. It's really not that complicated to nail boards to a leaking ship. <laughs> so this talk of a learning curve triggered me. It's just not that hard. Implying I need to play for many hours for it somehow to suddenly become fun. Or that I would hate the PvP less if I just did it over and over again. Eventually, I just said, dude, I hate, hate, hate that game. Hate it. Have fun. I just want to play Final Fantasy. I have fun there. I don't want to play a game I don't like. All right. All right, mate. All right. See how it is. See how it is. Tell you what. You take a little break for a while. Right? I'm pretty sure we'll get to play together again soon. Have a little break. Yeah? Probably for the best. That learning curve is something else. Don't, don't, not surprised you couldn't make it up there, mate. See your thieves is pretty extra. Time passed. We played Final Fantasy, conquering dungeons and raids, defeating primal entities, and had an overall great time. Every single fucking day I logged in, I had a great time. I got a message from West again. Now, this is the rough memory of how that conversation went down. <laughs> Pretty good raid today, wasn't it, mate? Did you like it? Fucking killing Ramu and that. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Really good. So, mate, when are we going to sail again, though? Got three people now, mate. Need one more for four? Count it. I've got three. Your one equals four. So... Are we gaming, then? Dude, I, I told you I hate it. I am really just not interested. Why do you hate it, though? Why would you hate an objectively great game? Is it because you is bad? I swear, if you learn how to play it, you'll love it like we love it. So learn it. Do so you love it? It's, it's not great for me. It's just not that great. The, P the PvP's tedious. Developers hate anyone who asks for a way to opt out of it. And all we ever did in the several times I played it with you, which I did do, was sail in fucking circles and do nothing. Repeatedly. It's a waste of my time. Me. <laughs> Me. Sorry to tell you, but this free company, yeah? They play Final Fantasy and Sea of Thieves. So you kind of need to install it. Because that's what we do. You know what I mean? So install it then. I'm not... Why am I... No! I just prefer PvE stuff! I've played enough MOBA and WoW PvP to at the very least know my way around beating other players up. So for this guy to call me out because I didn't like the PvP in his favourite game... I lost it. He'd been mithering me for weeks now. Months. I tried it. I'd done it with him. I'd been there. And I didn't want to go back. Now, I want to point out to your audience that this next part might seem a little drastic. Oh, God, what did you do? <laughs> but I made this decision out of anger and out of desperation because at this point I had 15 instances of dreaming about a game that I hated. Wait, you were actually real life dreaming about it? Oh, my God. I had a great time with Sea of Thieves. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> I opened up my Steam library. I select Sea of Thieves. I went to the support page for it. I asked to have the game completely <laughs> removed from my Steam library. But before I did that, I took a screenshot of my library to have a before and after shot. After that was done, I sent West the screenshot telling him that he could stop asking me to play it. Can I just play Final Fantasy XIV? He did not respond to me. He simply logged off for the evening. 
Now, this shouldn't have been a big deal. No, it really shouldn't. <laughs> this should not have been a big deal. Do you want to play Sea of Thieves? Nah, no, thanks. I don't like it. All right. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. <laughs> the following few days were really unpleasant. The free company chat carried on as normal, but any hails from my end were met with silence or passive-aggressive remarks. No longer were they interested in me being one of the few players that was actually a tank. They gave up on a tank for Sea of Thieves. The last straw, however, was when Wes decided to message my girlfriend. Oh, no! To tell her that I'm a piece of shit online player. And how can she be with somebody who's one of the most toxic online types? She deserves a proper man in her life. And a proper gamer if she's into that. Wow. Don't even PvP. Don't even fucking play boat game. You know what I mean? How can you fuck somebody who doesn't play boat game? You fucking... No way. You take your knickers down for him, dear. Don't even PvP, though. Does he? Fucking PvE. Plays PvE. The fuck is that? <sighs> fucking makes me sick, you know what I mean? Fucking playing PvE, scripted content. Can't even get into a fucking battle. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> he mentioned this was all because of his precious little pirate game. <laughs> well, of course we decided to leave. I wanted to make a big show out of it. I wanted to leave with some thunder, some lightning. I was advised against it. Knowing how strict Squeenix can get with grand shows of angry passion. The prior messages have been put through a filter in reality, but my show would have nothing like that. <laughs> we blocked the players from the company before taking our leave. And thus continued, hopefully, thankfully, on our adventure. We have not joined a new free company since this day. Are you for fucking real? Because of Sea of Thieves? <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm done i'm done everybody's done online gaming as a whole is fucking done it's over it's over i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> it's over i want to summarize this for you mike a free company in ff14 invited me to join them they came to me they some of them enjoyed playing sea of thieves i grew to hate that game and the free company members didn't help Matt as much. After pestering me for not wanting to play with them, I had to leave. I hope you in the chat enjoy the story. Perhaps a bit more disjointed as it involves two games and the sequence of events perhaps a little disjointed. And in case you're wondering, I have counted to this day 25 instances of me dreaming about Sea of Thieves. And I, of course, would rather be dreaming about Final Fantasy instead. <laughs> now... <laughs> I do want to say, Sea of Thieves is actually a really fun game. <laughs> it is. It's really... So I'm not saying this to you. I'm not saying this to be a dick to the author at all. I'm not saying that to the author. I'm saying that to anyone listening. Sea of Thieves is actually really fun. And if you've got a, a Microsoft Pass, it's free as well, right? He didn't give Sea of Thieves a chance. That's the issue. The, the Jack Sparrow stuff that just came out is really fun. We played it. You shouldn't be dreaming about the game either. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I think because we are joining the Yogscast in 27 minutes, we could do an extra long drama time. How good's that? Um, we can do an extra story. Why the hell not? Uh, ooh. ERP? Oh, go ERP? I don't know about that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah why not <sighs> ERP <laughs> ERP bonus go ERP why not why not let's rock and roll where is it okay let's go yes after drama immediately after drama I will be joining the Yogg's cast uh, to talk all things fantasy wow should be fun Drenai ERP. Oh, sweet Moses. The cloven hoof creatures. And we need... 
Mm -mm -mm. Davis! Gid and Kaladin. What's your art? Gold fuckers. Oh no. Not the gold fuckers. Alright. Uh, let's go. Uh, okay. I am one of the original World of Warcraft players, and for as many people claim this, there are very few of us. Do you think so? I mean, there are now, but <laughs> this is a bad time to ask that question. Uh, yeah. Those of us who managed to get the golden ticket. Oh, title? Oh, man. Shit. Don't hate me. Did it not save? I did change it. I remember doing it. There we go. Ah, oh, spell it wrong. Haters. Ah, oh, I can't delete. I wouldn't. Can you do right click delete? Yeah. Nailed it. Boom. <clears throat> Nailed it. It's all good. I am one of the original World of Warcraft players. And for as many people who claim to be, there are very few of us. Those of us who managed to get the golden ticket to the candy factory. Those of us who were there in the earliest of the WoW betas. Where the top level was 29 and you would farm wargons in Darkshire for endgame gear. There were only 10,000 of these tickets into that beta and I consider it one of the luckiest moments in my life. But of course, that is already guilty of not so humble bragging. I have a plethora of drama stories. This specific one happens in Wrath of the Lich King. At that time, I, of course, played a bear druid, which you should have because they were very strong. Now then, I shall skip many, many details of this prologue and address the most important bits. My first raiding guild was a family and friends style raiding guild. Due to my discontent with how loot favoritism and overall stubbornness of their raid leader to accept new ideas, I eventually left and joined the top guild on my server as they were recruiting. Oh, we need a guild name. I need a Wrath of the Lich King WoW guild name. All right. That's what I need in my life. Uh, think think Wrath. Think edgy. Think big armor. Big monkey stuff. <laughs> we need two. Did it say two? We need two guild names. All right. The Scourge Lords. Love it. <laughs> Frost Corpse. <laughs> Frost Corpse. I'm going with that. The Scourge Lords and the Frost Corpse. Yeah. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. <clears throat> this guild, the, uh, the Frost Cops, had two 40-man raid teams. Oh, no. <laughs> what? 40-man raid teams in Wrath of the Lich King? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. The A team and the B team. It just so happened that I was applying, uh, that as I was applying, a huge schism had just happened. The B team of Frost Cops had split off to make their own guild. The Scourge Lords. Oh, this works really well. I joined the A-Team, a Californian guild, and raided with them for a while. And while I did enjoy the successes of server first throughout the raid of Nax Ramus in Vanilla, the atmosphere in the atmosphere in Frost Corps was not friendly. It was clickish. It was passive-aggressive. It was hyper-competitive. Mostly because of leadership kept people in fear of being replaced. They had such a big, strong bench that any mistake you did would instantly be swapped out. Needless to say, the thrill of server-first kills was often overshadowed by people fighting over who deserves loot more. This guild handed out loot based mostly on your clout in the guild. They called it a loot council, but... <laughs> Some of it was based on actual strategy. Oh, is this in vanilla? I thought you said it was in wrath. Okay, so this is the start in vanilla. Okay, this is starting in vanilla. So we're, this all makes sense. Right, they've got two 40-man raid teams. Got it. Uh, this guild handed out loot based on clout. Some of it was based on strategy, getting all eight of our prop warriors, their four-piece set bonus. And some of it was just pumping guild, uh, loot to the officers. Now... The Scourge Lords and I did more casual content. Zul Grub, some five mans. I became fast friends and realized that the people from B team were for the most part good people. Genuinely good people. So the day that the Burning Crusade launched, I said, fuck you to Frostcore and G quit. I joined the server second guild 
the Scourge Lords, not caring that it was a downgrade. Because to me, they were my friends. And that's who I wanted to play with. Throughout the Burning Crusade, the Scourge Lords was just a couple of steps behind Frost Corps. There was a rivalry between us, of course, due to the history of being one guild at one time. Now, there were other rivalries as well, often with us. In fact, someone had formed another guild and raid group made entirely out of our application rejects. No matter the reason, people who were genuinely salty that they didn't get invited to our guild. But that is for another time. For drama, we had one relationship drama in the Burning Crusade, but we're otherwise pretty drama-free as guilds go with so many people. Our only notable loot drama was over the war glaives of Azanoth, but again, not worth a story here. My point is, we were an insular guild. Only ever hanging out with our own, not being bothered with outsiders. We kept a very tight roster of 25 raiders with just a couple of subs at any given time. People rarely ever left us, and our core was around 23 of 25 players. Preacher and members of the good jury listening to this today. This is the kind of guild that comes along once in a lifetime. And many will never even get to have this kind of guild. It was all friends. Every day we were doing something. Whether it was five mans, farming old content or whatnot. And I was friends with everybody in the guild. And they were friends with me. We blazed through Wrath of Lich King raids. Though not as fast, of course, as Frost Corps. Just as ICC was releasing, my then online long distance girlfriend broke up with me. And she was our main holy priest. We frantically searched for a priest to replace her and found Devis. Devis was a holy Draenei priest. A mother of two and wife to a loving husband. And she was a good healer too. Things went perfect at first. We were downing bosses left and right, directly on the heels of Frost Corpse, getting tons of loot, even getting server first heroic Lich King Tenman. Under my leadership, we had the best 10-man raid on the server. During my time in this guild, I was the chief finances officer. I took care of the guild bank. I sold our BOE drops. I arranged carries for our 10-man heroic kills and paid everyone accordingly. Under me, the guild bank balance exploded like never before. And so it seemed like we were in a great time of prosperity. That nothing could stop us. All friends, all earning good money. And nothing would stop us at all. But what I couldn't see, and why I'm here telling you this tale today, is that there was something festering beneath the surface. Something that fermented for months before it came to light. See, I was really good friends with the guild master, who was also our main tank, Caladane. Caladane was a wonderful person. She and I talked about anything and everything all the time. One of our favorite subjects being good beers. One day, Caladane brought to my attention that she had a hunch about something. We had been using a combination of loot council and zero sum DKP. Well, <laughs> of course. Where the loot council decided between overall DKP balance as well as taking into account raid attendance and contribution to the raid. For the most part, it was an incredibly fair system. Loot was not discriminately handed out and we attempted to make sure everyone got some love when it came to loot. But there was one person in particular that the loot council was oddly assigning quite a lot of items to, you know. And that was Devis. Most of the people on the loot council were my personal friends. There were six of them, and Caladane was the deciding vote if it was ever a tie. Caladane often confided things in me, and this time she had a task for me. She had heard mutterings of some things going on under the table, but couldn't be sure. She asked I investigate. As she, another, as another woman, might have a hard time coaxing anything out of Devis, and as a taken woman, even less out of the boys on the loot council who were definitely more thirsty for the single ladies. So I started my digging. Slowly but surely, during dungeon runs on Ventrilo and in Pink Chat, I talked with my friends on the loot council. I was careful on broaching the subject specifically of Devis. Some were more forthright about telling than others. One told me Devis had approached them with flirtations, but he turned her down as he found her approach gross. Gross? Immediately, I had to be even more careful than I was. The more I dug, though, the more I found. But you see, the mother of two and loving wife was having very, very lurid affairs with the rest of the loot council. She had sent nudes. <laughs> hmm. 
to steamy she had sent everything from news to steamy erp to erp that if done in real life would be probably illegal oh no <coughs> She had apparently had some running ERP that involved a dog. Hmm. What I eventually found was that all but one member had accepted her advances. Even my close friend Geeg. Geeg was a Brit who I actually managed to visit on a business trip to the UK. And he'll become important later. So I went back to Caladane with my findings. Since she trusted my judgment, she asked me that I what should be done. Since we were planning to take a break until the expansion, though we'd reconvene for the surprise raid Ruby Sanctum, it was set to be a very long break, if anyone remembers the Wrath content drought. In my capacity, I approached Devis as the financial officer. She had been saying that she wanted some BOEs for her alts. I told her that I could procure some for her. I never used the guild resources. I only ever used my own money. But I left the source of the BOEs dubious. She knew that I was wealthy in game, as well as the guild's treasurer. There were minor expenses and greased the wheels. Over the time of our break, I talked with Devis more until we began flirting. And I will tell you, chat, I engaged in some ERP with her. She told me that her husband did not mind her ERPing as she wasn't actually doing anything. But don't worry, I did quit it in glorious fashion. During our break, we decided to go get server first, no lights kill, since Frost Corpse had never claimed it. In one of our chats, Devis told me she was looking forward to getting that server first death's demise title. My response? Me too. But you're not going to be there. Why? She asked. I could sense the panic in how long she had taken to reply. You've been removed from the raid team. It only took seconds for her to G-quit, and she knew why this was happening. <laughs> you waited until she said she was excited about the raid? <laughs> really excited to raid? Oh, are you? Well, unfortunately. Unfortunately. The members of the loot council all learned of what Devis had been doing, that she had been juggling all five of them at once. you got to respect that. Once they got past their initial embarrassment, they began sharing their tales with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did she tell you then? No, no, no. Apparently, there were times that they managed to figure out the, t the exact time on the clock that they had been ERPing with her, and she had been ERPing with all three of them at once. Now, in good news, we did end up getting our death's demise. Yes, my server wasn't a really big raid server, and Frost Corpse was on the edge of breaking apart and splitting to the four winds, but still, we claimed it. Devis, of course, ended up joining the Frost Corpse. Two months after the lady appeared, the guild disbanded. Their stated reason was that they were just going their separate ways for Cataclysm. But my internal sources told me that drama had occurred because of some woman that had recently joined. My British friend Geeg also maintained contact with Devis. He liked the ERP and didn't give a fuck. Respect that. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you don't give a shit. I'm down. <laughs> She's left the guild. I don't fucking care. Like, uh, <laughs> Respect Geek. Hey, it's fine. It's fine. She always did love his British accent. The ladies in the guild always love that accent. We are American savages after all. Geek would sometimes bring her up in the following years. She, of course, never really changed and was the wedge that split apart many guilds. But Geek always maintained contact. What a dude. What a dude. Geek doesn't give a shit. But she was always the best geared priest on whatever server she transferred to. Always using her wiles to get into the top guilds and get as much loot as she could. Sadly, my amazing, amazing guild did not last. Over the course of Cataclysm, many of our members simply disliked where WoW was going. Others got jobs, grew up, had children, Caladane included. She got a job at a major game studio, and I'm extremely happy for her. And I know I'll never have another guild like that again. Of course you will. We'll still do good guilds every day. I know exactly what I am guilty of and not guilty of, but jury, feel free to excise your gavels to your heart's content. What are you guilty of? You're not guilty of anything. I don't think so. Right? Is she guilty of anything? 
I don't think so. I don't think our author's guilty. I don't, I don't think, I believe that for a happy, a happy, no, I mean, she did some ERP, or he did some ERP. Guilty by association? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. <laughs> well, that will bring us to the other drama, but not the